Let's begin with the CSV export method because it's much simpler setup, it's just one blueprint. First we'll go to Houdini and I'll place down a PCG export node and I'll visualize this and you, as you can see by default it will give you a grid and this is good just so we can see an example in the engine. So first thing I'm just gonna hit export and I get these two folders CSV folders and I can go into Unreal and work with them but first we need to get the plugin so by default we have these uh, 5.43 and so on these are the unreal versions i'm gonna show an example in 5.3 so i'll go in here copy this and in the plugin plugins folder so this is unreal you have the content folder here you make a plugins folder and you paste this side effects labs in here i have the plugins now that i need and the blueprint that i need so this is the csv blueprint for pcg sometimes these two uh, throw an error and if they do you all you have to do is just recreate them so in here and in the iteration loop body so these need to be recreated so the csv point format uh, the break csv point format you just recreate and if you cannot find it in the search here we did provide it here within the plugins folder you just open that copy this and paste here and you have it and you rewire this this is just an, a known error and that's that's the way you work around it once this is fixed if you need to fix it of course once this is fixed you can use it in your PCG graph. So make sure you have the PCG plugin as well. Okay, so we'll open that and do see the uh, Houdini, Houdini import data table. So this by default, you will see a few meshes like that. And we need to import the CSV files. So I'll import these and this should be CSV point format, apply to all. Okay, now I have the mesh, goes in here, the mat goes into the data. I'll visualize, let's see it. Well, we need to put the graph in here. Reset, reset, okay. We see something, they're too tiny. So we need to fix the conversion. Uh, expand points by 100 so that the units match. And as we can see, maybe they're too small, so we can do here uh, absolute. Now we can see the points. Okay, so how do we visualize these meshes instead of seeing points? So we'll do static mesh spawner and based on attributes. So by attribute, and it's complaining, it wants a uh, mesh uh, so like the attribute so what's the attribute name in this case it's mesh so we'll go here and we can see now uh, the houdini points here so mesh here has these random numbers from zero all the way to three so that's why we see like different shapes here because the points have attributes it's this mesh ID is turning these numbers into the meshes that exist. Okay, so, and at this point, what you could do is you can, instead of this cube, you can do maybe that cube. So as you can see that this workflow would be uh, very versatile. So you can make environments and replace the meshes here with the meshes you want and another thing you have is material overrides and you can do things like blue green let's say and let's see if we do have 
in Houdini, let's let's do a quick grid and give it our own attributes. So I'll do add like that. Just keep the points, and then uh, do add create. So this attribute, I'm gonna call it mesh. So by default, they're all gonna be zero, but uh, maybe if I select something like this okay so I'll export this instead and it's complaining about the orientation so either uh, normal and up or uh, orient so in this case I'll do normal and up so at create and I'll give it an up and this will be a vector default value up like that so Okay, just so I can visualize it quickly, copy two points. So these are the points and I'll do Tommy. So I'll export this instead and go into Unreal and re-import. Okay, so you just have to update the seed so you can see it. So we can see how the mesh ID can work to spawn different meshes. So it spawned the zero and one uh, in the way we ordered them to be. Uh, in this case, if I wanna see it here, I can do mesh like that and uh, maybe do pick here and give um, those two mesh attributes, one here and one there, combine and that's it. Okay, uh, so one thing to keep in mind is that the copy to points takes the mesh as an integer so this mesh IDs need to be as integer so that how that's how we can visualize it in here and then you can see the same result in there uh, another thing we could do is uh, material override so I'll, I'll do another uh, create attribute like that uh, and this case will be material and I'll keep this as, let's say, minus one. So all the points here will have material by default to be minus one. So in this, when I go into Unreal, by default, there this is zero and one. By default, there'll be nine, minus one, so they will not change. Except the points that I will select right now will be zero. So I'll select these ones in the center and then hit export, go into Unreal, re-import the data tables. We didn't see anything, of course, because the material overrides in the static mesh spawner did not change. So what we would need to do is add the material which is very, very important so to be able to see the override. So back into Houdini, I'll do another override here and I'll keep it as uh, one instead of zero and I'll do these points here. Okay, and export, go into Unreal and re-import the data table update this and as we can see we can do material overrides so you have the list of meshes the list of points and you can see how we have material material one and two and so on one two three four five these are material slot one two so if a mesh has multiple materials uh, you can override their slot one two and so on we can also spawn actors instead of meshes so spawn actor it's gonna complain of course but we need what we need here is spawn attribute mesh okay. so it works but i'm gonna hide this so uh, press e on that so i'll see and there's nothing of course because this is spawning actors whereas this is spawning meshes at the moment but if we want to spawn actors what we could do is switch to actors so by default it's gonna look at these which also don't exist uh, because these are static meshes so this, these are a list of uh, references. 
So what I will have to do is create a blueprint reference. So I'll just do a factor zero. And I'll do a simple static mesh here. Cube. Okay, I'll do this blue one. So I have this. I'll, all I have to do is uh, copy the reference and then I'll go to the blueprint and paste it. Uh, I'll just paste it everywhere here. And I can see that now I have all these different these are blueprints, like actors. Um, so they can have logic or they can be prefabs. So in here I can do something like, uh, I don't know, a sphere, compile, save, and go in here, update the seed. And we can see how we can make prefabs and or uh, logic, just like spawning uh, coins and uh, <coughs> other ob uh, objectives for, for the player to walk around uh, this like PCG environment.